ugly scenes like that are the backdrop to President Trump at the White House today delivering on a promise to protect free speech on college campuses. The president issued an executive order that pushes for a more aggressive adherence to the First Amendment, requiring universities to support free thought and debate or risk losing federal research dollars. Under the guise of speech codes and safe spaces and trigger warnings, these universities have tried to restrict Free thought imposed total conformity and shut down the voices of great young Americans like those here today. It's great people. All of that change is starting right now. Here now, Cabot Phillips, media director for Campus Reform. He was at the White House event today. Kristen Hawkins, president of Students for Life of America. She was also there. Richard Fowler, I don't think he was there, but he's a good guy. He's a senior fellow at New Leaders Council, a Fox News contributor. Good to see you all. Thanks for having me. Richard, I know you as a fair guy. You're not against free thought on campus, are you? Absolutely not. I think actually free thought and free speech are necessary for the education process. I think every voice should be heard, whether it is the Republic, a conservative voice, a pro-life voice, a pro-choice voice, uh, an LGBTQ voice. All these voices should belong on college campuses. Herein lies a problem with this executive order, is that all it does is reinforce a law that's already on the books that says that you have to promote free speech at colleges to qualify for research dollars, um, federal research dollars. Uh, if the president really wanted to go farther on this EO, he could have defined what hate speech was and created an actual litmus test. This executive order doesn't create a litmus test, just says that you have to promote free speech, meaning this will likely get bogged mm -hmm. down in the courts because someone will be like, well, what is free speech? How do you define it? And how am I doing it or not doing well, it? Which is why this EO is problematic. Well, Kristen, what about that? Because you've been on campus, as I understand it, you've been shut down by Antifa and others. What right. has been your experience and why do you think this was necessary? You know, I think today was a good step in the right direction because now we have the bully pulpit. You know, the president of the United States calling out these universities for the free speech suppression that goes on every day. And I think this is something that Americans now are being educated on, that these college students are going onto campuses who are courageously standing up for their values, are being shut down by their administrations, shouted down by other students. And I think it was good. It was a good day, a good moment to have the president of the United States, the leader of the free world, mm -hmm. reaffirm our constitutional right to free speech and free expression. Cabot, uh, Kristen makes a, an important point, which is sometimes a president, whether a Democrat or Republican, just by speaking out on an issue, signing the executive order, uh, brings light to something that needs to be told. On the other yeah. hand, to Richard's point, will this executive order really have any impact when there's a law already on the books it's not being followed. Why will universities all of a sudden say, okay, the president signed this, so we're going to allow conservatives to speak out? Well, I think this is going to bring accountability to these universities. For too long, they've been able to operate in the dark with people not really paying attention to what's going on. And I think the president using his position to draw attention is a step in the right direction. I applaud him for doing so. And I've been on over 100 college campuses in the last three years with mm -hmm. Leadership Institute's campus reform. I've seen students be secluded to little free speech zones on campus when they're trying to express their ideas. I've seen conservative groups lose their funding because the administration doesn't agree with their position. I've seen speakers. I've personally had to yeah. deal with suppression from a administration and students. And so this is an issue that it's going to uh, continue to grow if we don't address it. I, I applaud the president for doing this. And also, it's going to benefit students on both sides. Liberal students will also grow from this because they're going to have more access to ideas right. they maybe haven't heard in class or from other speakers. They're going to be stronger because of this. This should have bipartisan support. Right. Now, Richard, you made the point a moment ago, there's already protections in place. And yet, if you look at this video, uh, and there's been case after case where that has not actually happened. If you think about the student out west uh, who was punched in the face, uh, and, and th this video is, is disturbing, conservative activist Hayden Williams. This was at UC Berkeley just last month in February. And as you see that video play out, it built and built and built, and mm -hmm. finally he gets, he gets punched. Why is this it, happening on college campuses? And it, it's, it's a sad, sad, sad video because we should be promoting the debate of free ideals on college campuses. But we have to remember that there are thousands of college campuses all across this country, and there are millions of college students. Just to focus on Berkeley or two or three different examples isn't the best way to go about this. And I agree with everybody on this panel that the idea that we should have, we, we should yeah. not have free speech zones, and you should be allowed to speak freely and allowed to express your opinions. I'm just not necessarily sure that this executive order does enough 
enough to make more universities more yeah. accountable. All it well, says is well, Christian, we'll reinforce those laws. Okay, this, is, this is escalating in college campuses. I was just at a college campus two days ago facing protests and had to be escorted in and out with undercover and police officers in full uniform. This yeah. is escalating. Ever since so, President the, Trump but has been elected, order doesn't fix that. this is actually so does it make a difference? But the executive order doesn't fix that. Answer that question, Christian. Does it make a difference, though? We don't know. We do not know course, what's going to happen exactly. after this executive order. But I think this is and a good step in the right direction. It could have had more teeth. It could have restricted and we have to start aid. taking this action. <laughs> Okay, it could have done a lot of different things that it didn't do. So to parade it like it's this amazing thing that's going right. to all, all of a sudden stop this abuse. But you don't know what it's going to abuse. do. None of us well, do because I it was read just it and today. I read it and I know there's no enforcement I want to give Cabot the last word, Richard. You have both had a, a lot yeah. of chance to speak. Uh, Cabot, Richard makes it seem like, oh, it's not going to make any difference at all. A, shouldn't the President of the United States try? And B, when Richard said a moment ago, ah, you're using video from two or three things. Uh, is it really that isolated? Is it only two or three campuses? Well, last I checked, the job of the president is to first and foremost protect and defend the Constitution. And when you have billions of taxpayer dollars going towards institutions that aren't protecting the First Amendment to that Constitution, it's the president's job to step in and at least do the best he can to address that issue. And for every mm -hmm. one student that had their story told on stage today, there are thousands of other students that thought their university was able to bully them into submission. They didn't know what their rights were. They didn't know that it was wrong for the university yeah. to mm -hmm. deny them their rights. And this will draw attention to that, empower people who've had their rights taken from them, and it should scare them, this other side that's trying to take rights from people. Campus Once is again, Ed, without a litmus point. test, this EO really doesn't have the effect that people think it will have. Okay. It has to have a litmus test with clear definitions of mm -hmm. what hate speech is and what it isn't, what free speech is and what it isn't, so people in colleges know how to act. And well, without that in this EO, it yeah. doesn't have we'll that power. We'll see how it plays out. But the today was a good a step in the right direction. Okay. President freedom. promise. <laughs> we'll see whether freedom actually follows up. Cabot, Kristen, Richard, appreciate all your insights. Yeah. Thank Excellent. you. Up next, reports tonight that former Vice